next on the list oh we have this this is an interesting news on the podcast up front so i've only found this out recently it's happened a while ago right but i've only found out that supposedly history arenas is done the podcast is hosted by Yanis Pappas and Chrissy D is no more. Um, they've split up. They've gone to do their own thing. Because I was wondering why Yanis Pappas was, keeps doing that show he does called Yanni Long Days. So Yanni, Yanni Long Days, which is really good. It's really fun. Um, he's got the similar sort of ranting um, style of a Tim Dillon and a Bill Burr, right? He's really funny. Um, it can get a little bit annoying and a little bit um, <laughs> hard to follow on Twitter because he goes off when, he, when he's feeling on it and he wants to talk about politics and shit. But, you know, whatever it is, I, I like his I like his brand of comedy and how he kind of conducts himself. And he's a funny dude. Um, and I was wondering you know, what was going on. And then I saw Chris D started a new podcast with that guy, Sal Volcano. I didn't really check it out, but I just assumed it was just, you know, um, maybe on like a brief hiatus or whatever it may be. But supposedly it's completely done. And this is an article here courtesy of HITC. It says, History Hyenas, uh, History Hyenas Ending, Yanis Pappas Explains Podcast Fate on Twitter. Um, it says here, um, Yanis, um, is History Hyenas Ending and Why? Comedians Yanis Pappas and Chris Stefano Chris Di Stefano are successful in their own careers and their weekly podcast History Hyenas has become a huge hit since its launch. Sadly though, there have been rumours that the podcast is coming to an end and many fans are pretty gutted about it, me included. So is History Hyenas ending and why? Yes. Yes, History Hyenas is coming to an end. Yanis confirmed the sad news on Twitter. He said the rumours are true. History Hyenas has um, three more episodes and then it's over. I know it seems strange and sudden and I know it's sad for our fans and I want to thank the fans and you and everything and I hope to continue to enjoy Chris and Hey Bay and his other new show on true tv and more in another tweet uh chris said it's all love and teased that he and chris will ride again at some point in the future da, 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 da. so yeah man crazy consider like again like you have to remember right they had a pretty um unique and i think special podcast in terms of how it was basically done right you take a topic in history and you kind of dive on deep you uncover some you know interesting truth nuggets some interesting comedic things that they can kind of riff on and just a great way to kind of consistently keep it fresh and keep obviously the guests informed you people you sometimes you bring some guests in just do it then too it was a really really good show um i love the patreon questions that they were doing the q a's were really really amazing and the patreon was booming last time i checked it was like from what i remember it was like i think like 4k per month or something that they were making on patreon alone they'll point out loads of bonus content loads of stuff loads of communication and interaction with the fans and all this stuff like it's just really sad to see and to be honest um it says yeah why is it ending yeah that's and chris had revealed that they explained why they were ending his in the podcast last episode but it's safe to say that a lot of fans are sad um one person tweeted just found out it's ending um, and I don't know what I'm going to do with myself on Wednesdays. Definitely agree. Another person said, because of his Hyenas, I got really into my favorite comedians and met some of the nicest people ever. I'm excited to see what is next for Chris and Yanis. And someone stood, I'm still legit upset about his Hyenas ending. What's next? Yanis will continue hosting his own podcast called Long Days, which is available listen now. And moreover, will be performing at the Soldiers Comedy Club. It's, that's already gone. No, it's coming up. So on March 13th. As for Chris, he's upcoming show in Phoenix and you can find details in the show to clip. But the concerning thing about this is that it, it looks like Chrissy D is the one that initiated the breakup because he's now doing a show on True TV, which sounds again, I love the guys, but this this show sounds fucking terrible. Um, this is courtesy of Deadline TV. It says home renovation series Backyard Bar Wars ordered by True TV with Chris Stefano as host. All right. This is Chrissy D, of course, there. Um, comedian Chrissy D is playing a pub landlord in the busiest at home bars on the block in a new series for True TV. Um, I'm not even sure what True TV is. Again, I'm from the UK, so I don't know. Maybe it's a pretty decent channel, but from the looks of it, it doesn't sound like one of those uh, legit channels that you would actually be chuffed to be a part of. But again, maybe I'm wrong. Um, Chrissy D is hosting a Backyard Bar Wars, a home renovation series for the Warner Media Cable network the series will pit two neighbors against each other in a backyard build-off to create their own bar based on the rising trends of diy bars the series is a standalone is a send-up of the classic home reno show self um, self-described unhandy man uh chris Stefano roasting the builders as they put up their creations like what is this like again maybe i'm not really aware of this sort of stuff but i know there's like a whole home gym scene right 
maybe the whole home bar thing is a consequence of corona and lockdown but i've not really heard much about it i've seen people doing mobile bars and doing bars and sheds and stuff but for the most part the major thing that i've been seeing at home renovations has been concerning gyms and creating studios so the bar thing is just blows my mind secondly from the entire time i've listened to history hyenas i don't really remember chrissy d being a drinky guy like being very familiar with bar culture and how to put a bar together and talking about beers and or you know dark liquor and shit he's not really that kind of dude so i don't really know what kind of expertise he's kind of lends to this sort of thing it doesn't really make any sense it just sounds terrible like it kind of sounds like um a worse version of like bar rescue and bar rescue is quite formulaic right they just you know this guy comes in he's an expert in the hospitality industry he identifies the pain points and the things that you're doing wrong in your restaurants gives you a complete makeover and then you know hands you back your your keys to your restaurant so you can go on making some money because you've probably been losing it and you're in debt and shit but this sort of stuff like i don't what they're going to be competing to see who's the best bar in their garden in their home how do they judge what the best bar is who does that like um what he's roasting the builders that are going to be working on the same bars that the same builders that be working on every single uh, bar renovation it just doesn't make any sense um backyard bar comes from 44 blue productions a red hour studio company behind netflix jailbirds a knees wall perks <laughs> animal planners pitbulls and paroles the showrunner is reno canozzi who executive produced flip and flop nashville and has worked on a series including the treehouse masters and executive produced by Stephen stephanie sorry noonan whatever her name is there david hale and dan snook it'll be filmed in la around la will premiere in july 2021 like it just sounds terrible man and again maybe it's a really interesting that somebody it's really interesting for me as a fan and again me doing my own podcast that it seems like as much as these guys like to talk about being independent and doing their own thing and all this sort of stuff deep down it feels like a lot of these um especially the high level comedians people that kind of want to be part of the entertainment industry are secretly hoping for some form of validation from the industry whether it's hollywood you know the new streaming platforms hulu netflix they really want that stamp whether it's tv especially if you've grown up you know watching some of the you know more legendary shows on american television that's what they're really in for it for as much as they like to make out as if i'm happy with stand up and i'm i've got my fan base i can tour i can do my own thing on my own schedule because look fair enough this show is probably going to pay this guy guaranteed money way above what he's making even when you combine patreon but i guess part of the beauty of doing his own podcast and having you know a successful patron is that you can make your own timetable you don't you're not kind of uh, beholden to go into a studio and filming at a certain time you're free to jump on other people's shows because ever since because part of the reason i've seen especially on the subreddit people have been um saying that allegedly you know a lot of the i think archive shows or some of the other risque shows are you know un you're unable to find them i don't too sure if that's true but it does seem like he's kind of purposely trying to clean up his image you know the image the show that he's doing now with sal it they don't they don't curse or anything so he's obviously trying to get um some form of habit of making sure that he kind of is able to speak in that tv voice which makes complete sense and again he's got a young kid he's got a wife at home he's got a house more whatever it may be people have got responsibilities to make but it's just interesting when you think about him you think about Andrew Schultz um, there's somebody else as well loads of people who are kind of waving the flag of independence I'm going to stick by my thing da, 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 da. really when the big comes when the big guns come calling in the industry and again this maybe lends credence to something Whitney Cummins said recently in the podcast with Tim Dillon and she mentioned oh all you guys that talk about independence and not coming in industry eventually when they come knocking and they come with an offer you're going to also bend the knee or kind of kiss the ring right or kind of, whatever it may be right you're going to take that money because um, it feels like all of these guys secretly have always wanted to be part of the industry um so this why maybe you have to give brian callen credit in that respect right he never kind of hid his desire to be an actor right that so he just happened to be really good at stand-up but he really wanted to be an actor first and the moment that kind of was going for him he definitely didn't start abandoning the podcast and of course unfortunately the situation happened with him so everything kind of went away but this is interesting isn't it really interesting thing to see guys that are you know doing a crazy good podcast really great fan base you know probably one of the only podcasts i think from that scene that especially when you read the comments it usually you know insanely positive people really loved those guys they didn't really have a favorite they kind of had great chemistry again podcasting from what i've seen so far with people being on networks is very difficult to just make a successful podcast especially when there's two people or more than two people involved um especially when they're not friends and they happen to have a great chemistry on there they bounce off each other really well um again it was a really um interesting um 
you know theme around the podcast itself in terms of you know two comedians two stand-ups who you know profess to not know much you know diving deep on history you know really kind of showcasing their intellect and also providing some sort of comic relief amazing and again i just this is a screenshot somebody provided about the incomes that they were making i just i can't really it beggars belief how they would want to you know fumble the bag that badly but this is a screenshot talking about revenue on patreon per month and it lists here tim Dillon's show flagrant two podcast um bay ridge boys obviously that is his shiaenas chrissy d's own and yannis pappas and if you see the, the bay ridge boys i think when they announced that they were breaking up it obviously fell off a cliff around here on the 14th of february but at their peak right they were making something close to forty thousand dollars per month on patreon that's not including what they'll make in ad revenue. That's not what including they'll make with sponsors on their podcast. Not including what they're going to make on the road, doing sh live shows and shit. They were making 40000 just telling sh dick jokes and whatever it may be. Talking about history sprinkled in here and there. Like, it's mad, man. Especially when you consider the amount they were making on page, on flipping, on their live streams and their Q&As and shit. Like, I just, I really can't understand it, man. And especially when you think, again, I, I wish Chrissy did the best, but more than likely that show's not gonna go past two seasons maybe not even one so to give that world for that is mad but again maybe again guaranteed money and if if it does end up flopping they can still go back on the drawing board and put the show back together again you know it is what it is but very interesting development there very very interesting development 